when I was talking with a gentleman from Belcom, and and we were discussing uh, the lie. Everything he was telling me was different from what we were being told uh, was the truth. And at one point, I asked him. I said, "Man, you guys, you, you lied about a lot, didn't you?" And instantly, he said, "No, we didn't lie about certain things. We lied about everything. None of it was true." I really don't think people realize how deep the lie goes. Space, the final frontier. Space may be the final frontier, but it's made in a Hollywood basement. The vector, NASA's official logo. If you've ever looked at NASA's official logo, both their their official insignia and their official seal, you'll see that the most prominent object in the in the seal is a, a red, swooshing object. They call that the chevron or the vector. If you ask NASA's public affairs office that this symbology is featured so heavily in their insignia and seal, they'll give you what really amounts to the the standard facile cover story for the unilluminated. They'll tell you that that is uh, a representation of a hypersonic wing design from the 1950s, um, which was the time the logo was created. Um, not exactly the case. Um, someone might want to ask the Russian Federal Space Agency, Roscosmos, that was formed in 1992, why they chose that same logo. And while you're at it, you can go ask the Chinese, who formed their space agency in 1996, why in the world they're using a hypersonic wing design from the 1950s as their official logo. Then you can ask the Japanese, the South Koreans, Taiwanese, Malaysia, Mexico, Iran, all of these countries, even Bulgaria, they all utilize the vector symbology in their space agency logos for their, their national space agencies. Um, it gets even deeper. You can go look at the individual manned program patches for NASA. Now, the Mercury program, for example, uh, a blatant use of covert symbology. In every logo dealing with the Mercury program, you'll see what looks like a number seven in their logo. And again, NASA's official story is that they put this number seven there so that they could pay homage to the original seven Mercury astronauts. Um, kind of forgetting the fact that only six Mercury astronauts actually flew into space because number seven never, never did. Deke Slayton had a heart problem, so he, he didn't get to go up. Uh, so there were only six Mercury astronauts. Yet there's a seven in every single logo. That's in the official mission and say or official program insignia for Mercury as well as the six individual mission patches carry this logo. And it carries on to the space shuttle program. If you look at the Apollo logo, the Apollo logo has a big letter A in it. At least that's what they want you to believe. But it's not. Again, that's just a simple way of explaining away the inclusion of this vector symbology in the logo. If you go to the space shuttle program, uh, the original space shuttle STS program patch is a triangular patch that, again, hides the use of the chevronic vector symbology. And that also goes for many of the STS specific mission patches. Uh, every single one of the International Space Station expedition patches carry the vector symbology. The Russian Mir Space Station used the vector symbology. That was their, their official logo. And you can even go f deeper and look at military industrial complex companies. Look at the logo on a company like Lockheed Martin, two vectors. Um, the XPRIZE logo, Ames Research Labs, U.S. Space Command, when you get into the military realm, the United States Space Command, their official logo is the vector symbol. And when you look at the military's individual space-specific programs, all of them, all of them deal with vector symbology in their official insignias. And the, the question really becomes, who or what are these people paying homage to? And the truth, quite frankly, is out of this world.
This painting entitled The Madonna with Saint Giovannino was made sometime during the 1400s. The artist's name is not known, but at first glance you can notice a UFO shape in the sky to the right side of the Madonna. If you were to see the original full-size painting, you would see the object clearly. Looking at the enlargement, you can see a man and his dog standing and looking up at the object. However, this painting has something else being depicted. On the left side of the painting, you see the sun and some vector-like objects seemingly flying from or toward the sun. Perhaps this artist was trying to tell us something. In another painting of the Madonna made by a completely different artist, the unusual patterns of the sun and the vector-like symbols have also been added prominently on the Madonna's cloak. You can see the same symbology on this painting as on the one before. This time, however, there is no UFO object to be seen anywhere in the sky. This footage was taken over Mexico City in 2002. There were many other videos and photographs taken of this same type of object, clearly resembling the shapes as seen on the visor of the astronaut, on the moon, and depicted in the 14th century paintings of the Madonna and Child. There is probably a larger story behind the vectors, but it is very unusual this symbology has been adapted by all the United States and foreign space agencies, especially enemies like Iran. Ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. Ground control Nine. to Major Tom. Eight. Seven. Commencing countdown engines on Seven, six, five Check four, ignition one, one, and may eight, God's eight, love be with you Now it's time.
There's always room in life for this 